Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, we continue solving um, problems uh, on probabilities, easy problems. Um, I do recommend, as usually, go to the website unizor.com to this lecture. This is lecture number four among easy probability problems. And try to solve these problems yourself. There is a solution provided uh, as a note uh, in, uh, for this particular lecture. Uh, but I do recommend first to try to solve it yourself. Then you can read the notes, you can listen to this lecture. Maybe you can come up with your own ways to solve these problems. All right, so four pro uh, three problems. Number one. Um, okay, we have three students who are preparing for exam. Exam contains 100 questions. Now, on the exam, the student comes and basically pick one of these 100. Now, Either he is prepared or he is not prepared for this particular um, uh, question uh, on, on the exam. So here is my statistics. The first student, call him S1, he is a lazy guy and he is prepared only for 50 questions out of 100. Now the second student is kind of busy. He's reading some very interesting novel, so he didn't have much time. He prepared for 75 questions out of 100. And the third student, he is actually a good student, but at the very last moment, you know, his friend, girlfriend, called him, and he did not finish his 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 uh, work, his preparation. He is prepared for 90 questions out of 100. Now I have a couple of. Uh, problems related to this situation. Problem number one. We need the probability of all students got familiar question. The one which they have been prepared for. What's the probability of this? Okay, let's think about it. Now, we have basically three completely independent events. The first student picks the question out of a hundred, the second one, and then the third one. Now, if the first student has 50 questions which he is familiar with out of a hundred, then obviously the probability of the first student to, be, uh, to, to pick the familiar question is 50 over 100. Now, for the second student, the probability is corresponding with 75 one hundredths, and the third one is 90 one hundredths. Now, what we are interested in is, uh, we are interested in all, all of them, all of these three students um, got the familiar question, which means this event and this and this event. Now, since events are independent, the probability of the combined event is equal to the product of the corresponding probabilities. You know that. So the probability is equal to the product of these. Whatever it is. This is one half uh, times three quarters times nine tenths, right? So what is it? 27 inches. That's the probability. Now, question number two. What's the probability of all got unfamiliar questions? Well, these are opposite events, actually. For the first one, to get unfamiliar, if he is prepared for 50, then unfamiliar is also 50, so it's 50 one hundredths. For the second one, if he is prepared for 75, he is not prepared for the last 25, so the probability to pick one of those would be this, and for the, same, for the third one would be this. And I'm multiplying them again because these are independent events, and the probability of the combined occurrence of the three different independent events is equal to the product of their 
probability. So that's the answer. Next one. Now, what's the probability of only one probability of one out of three student students to have an unfamiliar question. So one of them picks unfamiliar question, but others pick one of those which they have prepared for. All right, this is a little bit more complex. And that's why I suggest we go to the basics and let's just deal with events and their probabilities and opposite events, etc. So, um, what's the events which we can consider? For student one, there are two different independent events. One is good when he is choosing one of these, one of the familiar questions, call it G1, good for the first student. And the other event is if he is picking uh, the, um, the question which he's on, uh, not familiar. That's the bad one. B stands for bad. Now, for the second student, also there are two events. And for the third student, good being picking the familiar question, B bad being unfamiliar question. And we know the probabilities of each of these events, right? So this is uh, 0.5, this is 0.5, this is 0.75, this is 0.25, this is 0.90 and this is 0.10, right? The opposite. Now, what is this particular event? One out of three students have an unfamiliar question and the other two familiar questions. Well, there are three different possibilities and they are mutually exclusive. So the event which we are talking is either the first one would be the unlucky guy who will issue, who will have the uh, unfamiliar question, which means it's the B1, it's the bad for the first student, but the other two are good, and they are independent, so we have to really have, let's put the word end, or uh, set theory uh, intersection sign. So the two is good, and the three is good too. So that's one event. Then, mutually exclusive event when it's the second one which is unlucky, which means the first one gets the event which he is pre uh, gets, the, gets the question which he is prepared for, the second one is unlucky, and the third one is the lucky one. And finally, the third, again mutually exclusive event, is a combination of first one is lucky, second one is lucky, and the third one is unlucky. So we need the probability of this combined event. Now let's just think about it. What is this? Why do they put pluses here actually? I suppose, well actually I should put OR in this case. That would be better from the uh, probabilistic standpoint. But pluses is, is good too because in this case we are talking about mutually exclusive events and the probability of OR on mutually exclusive events is the sum of their probabilities, right? It's basically like a measure theory. If you have certain area and we have two different sub areas which are mutually exclusive, which means they are not intersecting, the area of the sum of these or OR of these is equal to the sum of the areas, right? So, in this case, it's some of these. Now, inside of each of them, so basically I can put return back to the plus. It would be plus, plus probability of this guy, plus probability of this guy. Now, inside each probability, I have uh, the end condition, basically, right? This is intersection, which means end. These are independent events, and that's exactly how it was in the previous 
um, problem. Um, the probability of combined event is equal to the product of their um, probabilities because they are completely independent. So basically I can, instead of this, I can put the multiplication It's the probability of B1 times probability of G2 times probability of G3. And same thing here. Times probability of this times probability of this probability of this multiplied by probability of this multiplied probability of this. So that's the final formula. Product of these three probabilities plus product of these plus product of these. And we know all of them. Like B1 for instance is equal to 0 0.5. Uh, G2 is equal to, it's a success, which means 0 0.75. G3 is equal to 0 0.90. This G1 is equal to 50 0.5, B2 is 0.25, because there are 25 un unfamiliar, and this is uh, 0.9, this is again 0.5, this is 0.75, and this is 0.1. So that's the answer. And finally, the last one about the same thing, the same problem is probability of at least one student will get an unfamiliar question. Uh, at least one student gets unfamiliar question. Now what does it mean? Well, let me just formulate it differently. It's the opposite to none of the students get unfamiliar question, right? At least one gets unfamiliar, which means once or two or three. It's just an opposite to the event which we can very easily calculate, uh, the event when none of them gets unfamiliar questions or all of them get familiar questions, right? So basically it's the one minus probability of all get familiar question, which we have already calculated in the very beginning. That's the first um, task, which is the product of these three. So it's one minus 0 0.5 times 0 0.75 times 0 0.9. That's the answer. Okay, that's my first question, well, first problem, I should rather say. It had four different questions. Now, the second problem, um, second problem also has two different questions, and they are very much look alike. And what's interesting is even the results are the same. However, the logic which goes is is slightly different. Actually, it can be different. All right, so you have a standard deck of cards, 52 cards, from 2 to 10 uh, in four different suits. Spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. And then you have jack, queen, king, and ace also in four suits. Let's call these guys numerics. And these guys I will call pictures. So I have two categories basically. Forget about the cards. I have two categories of objects. I have uh, from 2 to 10 it's what? I have 36 numerics and I have 16 pictures. That's it. That, that's all you want to know. Basically, it can be 52 different balls, uh, 36 white and 16 red, or something like this. Doesn't really matter. Now, now what I'm doing is I'm picking up two cards. 
but I'm picking up differently. My question number one is, um, what is the probability of second card, which I picked from the deck, to be numeric if the first is numeric. And I'm not returning back, by the way, cards. That's very important. So I pick first one, and that's the condition. It's numeric. I put it aside. Now, from the deck, I'm randomly picking up the second card. What's the probability of this card to be numeric? Well, this is actually very easy to solve logically. Let's just think about it. If I have already extracted one numeric card, I have out of 36 numeric, I have only 35 left, right? So I have 35 numeric cards left. Now, the whole deck contains obviously 51 card because I, it used to be 52 but I took one away. So the probability to get numeric and there are 35 numerics out of 51 card is 35 51st. That's the answer. Such an easy problem, right? I would like however to approach this problem in a more uh, theoretical way if you wish because it will be very useful for the next problem. So what's my theoretical approach? My theoretical approach is, okay, let's just think about what's my sample space, what's the probabilities of each um, elementary event which uh, I is constructing, which is making up this uh, sample space, and then we will start from that. Well, basically my sample space is um, different combinations of numeric and pictures uh, to be among the two picked cards, right? So, what, what kind of combinations I have? I have N, N, numeric, numeric. I have numeric, picture. I have picture, numeric. And I have picture, picture. That's what I can get if I pick two cards, one after another, from the deck, right? So, let's call these A, event A, event B, event C, and event D. Now, What's the probabilities of this? Well, let's just think about it. First of all, um, the uh, total number of different uh, combinations of two cards, which I pick out of the deck of 52, is um, 52 times 51, if we are actually uh, consider them to be an ordered pair, right? We are talking about ordered pair. So the number of the um, different um, cards which I can pick on the first uh, pick is 52 and on the second is 51. So their product is the total number of ordered combinations of pairs. So it's 52 times 51. Now how many combinations are of these? Well it's 36 for the first one and 35 for the second, right? So it's 36 times 35. This is 36 for the first and a uh, picture is out of 16, so it's 16 for the second. This is 16 for the first and 36 for the second and this is 16 times 16. Now, if you will add these together, in theory, you have to have the same number as this one, right? Because that's all the different combinations. Well, um, you know what? I actually would like to do it. I think it's very uh, educational and uh, just to check myself. So if I add them up together, um, I will have, let's add these two. I will have 36 times 35 plus 16, which is 51. Let's add these two, that's 16 times uh, 52, right? Which is um, well, let's call it 51 
plus 1. Uh, okay, so if I add them up together, I will get, so this is 61, 66, 16 times 51 plus 16. If I add these two, I will have 52 plus times 51. Now, something is wrong here, right? I think I did not really add it up correctly. 16. Oh, no, of course not, because it's 16 times 15. The first one is pictured, and then we have only 15 pictures left, right? So this is 36 times 51, and this is 16 times 51. And if I will add them up together, I will get 52 times 51, which is this. Okay, everything is fine. Now, let's continue. So we know the probability of this is 36 times 35 divided by 52 times 51, etc. So we know the probabilities of all these events, A, B, C, and G. Now, what are we interested in? We are interested in the second to be n numeric if the first uh, one is n. So the first one is n is a condition, and uh, we are looking for a conditional probability of the second to be n, which is this and this, which is A or C, under condition that the first one is n, which is these two, A or B. Now, let's think about it. What is the conditional probability? Let's just remember our theory. The conditional probability, let me just remind you. Let's say this is our sample space. This is my A, and this is my B. What is conditional probability of B under condition of A. Well, basically you take only, you consider whatever is inside A to be basically a new sample space, and whatever falls inside A, which is part of B, is basically uh, the events which we are interested in, but we have to know which part of the whole area, which is area of A, um, is, is taken by, by this particular uh, common part. So it's P of A and B divided by B of A. This is conditional probability of B under condition of A. That's what it is. That's basically the definition. So now let's think about this. So our condition is A or B. That goes to the bottom. I shouldn't use A and B. You know what? Let me use X and Y. That would be more appropriately because a and b i'm using here so this is x this is y so this is x and y divided by x and this is the probability of y under condition of x now the x is is our condition x is this and y is this so, what's the um, numerator of this? A or B, and this is A or C. Now, A, B, and C are mutually exclusive, right? A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. So, if I'm or A or C, and I intersect A or B, well, obviously I have only A, right? So this, this, is A. And on the bottom of half A or B, the probability of X, which is A or B, and A or B, again, because they are mutually exclusive, their probabilities are added together. So A or B we should add together. Equals. Now, what is it equal to? Well, both of them are this divided by this. So, this denominator is uh, mutually 
uh, cancel gout. So I can basically compare these numbers only. So P of A, which is 36 times 35, divided by P of A plus P of B, which is sum of these, which is 36 factor out times uh, 51. So it's 36 times 51. Now 36 is canceling, and I have again 35 over 51. Exactly the same as I have just received using my logic. Like, considering I have already picked one numeric, I have only 35 left out of 51 cards. So we have exactly the same answer, but more, I would say, theoretical, classical approach, etc. And um, why do we need it? For the next problem. For the next problem, it's more, if, uh, uh, more um, um, significant to have this particular approach because there is no proper logic like in the first problem. Okay, so let me just again write down my events. This is numeric and numeric. Um, should use plus. B is numeric and picture, C is picture and numeric, and D is picture and picture. And the numbers are 36 times 35, uh, 36 times 16, 16 times 36, 16 times 15, out of the total 52 times 51. Okay, now here is the second problem. Now remember the first problem was what's the probability of the second card to be numeric if the first is n known to be numeric. Now I'm reversing the situation. What's the probability of the first card numeric if, let's consider I pick the first card and put it aside and I don't know where it is. But now I pick the second one and I open it up and it's numeric. So now my question is, what's the probability of the first card, which we don't see, to be numeric? Well, it's not exactly the same as the previous problem, as you see, and I don't see the same kind of very easy logic which would allow us to come up with an easy solution. Um, I mean, maybe there is one, <laughs> I just didn't come up with. So I decided to go using the heavy artillery, exactly the same approach as I did before. Now, in our case, what am I supposed to find out? I'm supposed to find out conditional probability of the first one to be numeric, which is A plus B, A or B, under condition that the second is numeric, which is a and C. So you see formula is very close to the one which, is, which I was using the, uh, for the first problem, right? In the first one it was A or C under condition A or B. Here it's basically condition is uh, the conditional probability and whatever was in conditional probability becomes a condition. Alright, now there is no much difference. I'll do exactly the same thing as I did before, right? Which is the probability of their intersection, and their intersection is probability of A, divided by, in this case, that's probability of the condition, which is probability of A plus, because they are mutually exclusive, the probability of C. So the formula is always the same, except it's P of C, probability of event C, rather than probability of event B. That's the only difference. But now, let's just think about it. B and C have exactly the same chances to occur. So it's either the first one being numeric and the second um, picture, or the first picture and the second numeric. The probability of both of them is exactly the same, and that's why the answer is exactly the same, which is 36 times 35 uh, divided by... Um, divided in A and C, 36 
times 35 plus 16, which is 35 51st. As you see, the probability is the same as the first question was. But it's a completely different uh, problem, completely different approach. Uh, whatever was uh, the event which we are interested in becomes a condition, and whatever was a condition becomes an event which we are interested in. But it's the same answer quantitatively. So that's basically the only interesting thing. All right. Well, actually, I do have another problem in the same, um, uh, the same general setting. So again, I have the deck of 52 cards. Some of them are numeric, some of them are pictures. Now, question is, if I'm picking the cards one after another, one after another, what's the probability of the last one to be numeric? Well, in this case, let me just uh, approach this using again very simple logic. It's basically equivalent to picking up one particular uh, card and basically call it the last one, which means everything else I'm just choosing before it and I'm leaving this one as the last one. And the probability obviously is equal to how many uh, different numeric uh, cards. There are 36 numeric cards out of 52. So that's the probability, which is, what, uh, 9 thirteenths. That's easy. Now, now I have the problem, which also involves a deck of cards, 52 cards. But now this is more closer to those who play bridge. You know, the bridge is played by four people. 52 cards are divided among four people. 13 each. And now I am interested in the following uh, distribution of cards. So uh, I would like to have the probability to have one particular, um, one particular hand to have all four aces and all four kings and all four queens and 12 in one and one jack. So, if you're playing bridge, and this is the game without the trumps, without the trump suit, this is the highest combination possible, right? All 13 cards are the, uh, the top cards in each, each of the suit, and there is one extra uh, jack. That's the, uh, as much as it can be. So, what's the probability to have to pick 13 cards, let's say I'm playing one of the players, so I'm asking what's the probability of me to have these 13 cards so I can, you know, win the game without the Trump suit. All right, that's actually quite easy. The total number of all the different um, combinations of 13 cards out of 52 is obviously which is um, yeah, it's 52 factorial divided by 13 factorial and 52 minus 13, 39 factorial. So that's the total number of all the different combinations of 13 cards which I can get in theory, right? Now, which of them are good? Well, the combination which contains all these cards, and these are fixed, basically, and this is the only card which I have a choice. Either uh, it, it should be jack of spades, or of, of jack of hearts, or diamonds, or, or clubs. So there are four different variations. So if these are the total number of different uh, mm, uh, combinations of 13 cards, and four of these combinations are those which I'm interested in, well, that actually makes the probability equal to 4 divided by number of combinations from 52 by 13. So that's the answer. And that completes my um, lecture. 
I would uh, certainly suggest you to go to the uh, website theunisor.com again and look at the notes to this lecture, especially notes where I am um, talking about all these different events uh, related to numeric and, and, and picture, A, B, C, D, different conditional probability, the theoretical approach um, which, wor which works in, in those two cases. Um, it's very educational and it actually brings some clarity into your understanding of what actually the conditional probability is. So that's it for today. Thanks very much and good luck.